All right, we're going to do a haircut and a perm today with Carlos. So starting off with the hair, we're going to keep keeping the mullet, but not going too short. We're going to fade his sides back in, get him around a four down to a two, clean it up over the ear. Um, and then we're going to go in and do the perm. So Carlos, I wanted to kind of go over with you um, exactly what the perm is going to entail and just a little bit about the process. Okay. Um, since it's your first time getting a perm. Yeah. So we'll start by like washing you out after we do the haircut, getting you all clean, uh, getting the hair all clean. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and section and wrap you. We're going to go ahead and go in with like the orange rods so that you get that curl. And with your hair being so straight, it'll kind of loosen up at the end and um, give you a little bit of longevity with it. Okay. After we section and wrap it, we're going to apply some cotton around the perimeter of the hair. And then we'll go ahead and add the solution in. Uh, the solution is going to take about 25 to 30 minutes. Okay. After about 15 minutes, we're going to check it, see how the curl is doing. And then every, every five minutes after that, we'll check it again until I feel like the curl is tight enough and we're ready to rinse it out. Okay. We're going to go in. We're going to rinse it for five to 10 minutes um, with the warmest water that you can tolerate. Um, and then we'll bring you back. We'll towel blot it, paper towel blot it, get some of that water out. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to go ahead and add the uh, neutralizer in okay. and that's what's going to help it stay and we'll apply the neutralizer apply some cotton again and let that sit for about five minutes and then we'll rinse it out with the rods in the hair again and then we'll take all the rods out and then we'll rinse it and um, condition the hair one important thing for you yeah. is you can't wash your hair for 72 hours okay. so today is Friday Saturday Sunday Monday you should be able to wash it again okay you really like no water or nothing if it gets wet it's not the end of the world like you're out in the rain but just no shampoo because you want those chemicals to really like sit and like yeah gotcha. and after that we'll throw some products in your hair and be out the door sounds good all right then. we'll go ahead and get started with the haircut yep i'm doing a mullet we're gonna fade his sides in back down um we're going to start with a four and fade it down to a two. So we're not going all the way down to skin, right? No. So we're no, we're not going all the way down to skin. He wants to see a little bit of length there still. So that's the number four you're starting with? Yep, that's going to be the four guard. We'll start with the four, leave him just a little bit of an edge, and then we'll go from there. And those are the magic clips, right? The wall magic clips? Mm-hmm. Yep. I like using the color-coded one because it, I think color helps add to memory and just helps you grab them a little faster. Why do you like those clippers? I like the Magic Clips. Um, they're lightweight. You know, they're they're good for most hair textures. They're they're some of my favorites. I always go back to them. I've tried, I've tried quite a few other ones, and there's, there's definitely other good stuff out there, but I always go back to these. I'm actually going to go ahead and just fade the side in, and then we'll switch and we'll do the other side. So I started with the four, and then I'm going to go up with my two, and then I'll use the three to just kind of blend it in. It depends on like if I've done it before on the client. A lot of the time, like I'll do the one side and turn them around, let them check it, see where we're, see where we're at. Um, but yeah, it saves on time just a little bit doing one side at a time. You're not having to spin them around and that kind of stuff. Yes, you do have to put the guard back on the clipper, um, but I still feel like it saves a little time. All right, I've got my fade where I want it. I'm going to go in with my trimmers and just line everything up. These are the Saber Style Crafters. I'm going to thin the ledges out just a little bit. 
I'm using the thinning shears just to thin it out just a little bit. It felt a little bulky. All right, now that we got the hair cut out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and take them back to the shampoo bowl and wash it out. Give them a nice clarifying shampoo. Yep, so we just washed them out. We're gonna add another cape um, to just prevent any of the chemicals and stuff kind of getting on them. And what's different about that cape instead of the cape that you just had on? So this one's a little bit more durable and a little bit more water resistant. The capes that we use for haircuts, the water can kind of seep through them just a bit. What kind of cape is that? Is there a brand on there? Betty Dyer? Betty mm -hmm. Bleach proof. That's a chemical cape. Chemical cape, thank you, yes. And the one you had is like a cutting cape. Yeah. That one's from Illusion, right? Got it. All right, now that we got them double caped, we're just gonna go ahead, section them out. I'm gonna use some metal clips and just kind of part it. He's not going for necessarily the middle part like he wants it to be a little bit messier but we are going to perm it um, down the middle and then we're going to leave some in the front perm those forward so that he can have some stuff hanging in his face i'm going to do about two perm rods right towards the front so when i'm making my sections i'm doing them in about a perm rod length the sectioning and the parting definitely does add to the time, but it makes it easier once you get going. So typically it's going to kind of be, if you can see the indentations right on the perm rod, it gets a little bit bare right here. And that's about where the hair is going to align. So we have it just right in the middle of it. Might be kind of hard to see on camera. And then as we start perming, the sections will also be the width. So they want to be the length and the width of the rod. So we'll probably do about three or four right here. Can you undo a perm? No. You can cut it off. I guess you technically probably could do a relaxer on it, which is taking curly hair to straight, but it would just, it, it would annihilate your hair. Yeah, it would be very muddy, and and that's why, you know, uh, individuals with super lightened hair like myself, um, you want to be very careful with doing perms because you've already put so many other chemicals into it. Throwing other chemicals on top of it uh, can get scary. I feel like the technical skills of doing color and perms and stuff like that might be a little bit easier than the technical skills it takes to do like a serious fade or um, you know some of the men's cuts that we do here but you have to have so much more knowledge on what you're putting on a client's hair and knowing what they've put on their hair previously and that was one of the things that always really scared me is like someone coming in with black hair and saying it's natural or that they haven't put color on it and then they've put some kind of box color that will react super bad with like lightener and then their hair just like starts falling out. Now that we've got those in we're going to start with um, doing the rods on the front. So you want to take your end paper. You can use one, you can use two. Uh, the most important thing is that it just covers the hair and it's okay to squeeze the hair in too. Just kind of pushing the rubber band back and making it just a little bit tighter. All right, one down, probably about 35 to 50 to go. <laughs> so the end papers, um, 
seal the ends in because when we're perming, we're actually breaking, the solution's actually breaking the disulfide bonds in the hair and then reforming them around the rod in that shape. So the end paper keeps the ends tucked in and kind of keeps them from flaring out and splitting so that you have a smooth curl towards the end so that it doesn't fray, basically, like fish tailing. Kind of like the same when you tuck your ends into a curling iron. Same concept. So end paper prevent frayed or split in? Exactly. And something you think somebody could do at home? Um, I wouldn't recommend it. That's for sure. Could they? Sure. But you would definitely need someone's help doing it on yourself. Uh, I, I, would, I would not do that. I don't see how you could even get the back of your head. But uh, anything's possible. And then if you ever want to use a second person to help you out with adding the rods for the sake of time, you can always do that. I've got Kate helping me out now. Yeah. Hi, I'm Kate. So um, I'm taking over for Christy. Uh, this is the first time we've done this service here, so we didn't quite a lot enough time, but thankfully we were able to kind of tag in for each other. Um, so now I'm taking off his um, cutting cape. So there's probably gonna be some drippage when we put on the perm solution. So I don't want anything getting on that fabric cape because it will probably stain and or ruin it. So we're just gonna double drape because I really don't want anything to get onto his clothes or his skin. So Carlos, we're gonna put some cotton all around where these perm rods are to make sure that we don't have anything that drips into your face or eyes. And you just wanna make sure that you tuck that cotton all the way around all of the rods. We roll that rod too. And that's just to catch anything that might drip. Yes, that's to catch anything that might drip, protect the rest of the hair. I like to double it up usually just to make sure we're not getting anything, getting anything on the hair or on the skin. All right, so we got y'all wrapped in cotton. We're gonna grab, this is our waving lotion. So what is that? So this is the waving solution. So this is what's actually gonna break those break those bonds and start reforming them. So this is um, an alkaline perm, correct? So it's not an XO or endothermic, so it's not gonna give off any heat. Real quick, I just need to get in here. Carlos, I'm gonna have you, just because I'm super paranoid, I'm gonna have you cover your face with a towel for me, yep. okay? Yep, just catching any kind of drips. You have to, you wanna make sure you saturate every rod. So you wanna make sure you're moving them. Wanna make sure you're getting above them, below them. Waving solution's usually pretty liquid and um, I don't know, I think I just go fast because I'm used to it. Yep, there's that smell. Is it a good idea to have the, the doors open or the AC running? Uh, yeah, you definitely need to do this in some type of ventilated area. Um, it smells pretty bad. <laughs> so you're gonna use that whole bottle? I probably won't, but I'm probably gonna use most of it. Carlos has very straight hair, so I just want to make sure it's very, very saturated. And then um, I'll take that plastic bag. Just 
helps give us some insulation. All right, and then we're gonna let you sit for about 15 minutes and then we're gonna take a look, okay? All right, so Carlos has been processing for about 15 minutes out of the recommended 25, 30 minute processing time. So I'm just gonna check one of his curls and I'm just gonna do the nape. All right, and as you can see, we definitely have lift, definitely have movement before his hair was kind of falling straight down. You can definitely see the bend and the wave that we're gonna have. So that's good, that means the solution's doing its job. His hair still feels strong, it's not falling out. The elasticity is good. So we're just gonna roll him back up. We're gonna switch out his cotton because that solution is really watery and it's definitely, definitely gonna start saturating that cotton. So we've been changing that about every five minutes. Thankfully, it's pretty easy to, to just kind of tear away when we need to. I like to start with the forehead because gravity wise, that's usually where the most drippage is happening. And this way you don't leave your client unprotected if they move and have any more drips because that perm solution will burn their eyes. What does the bag do? So the bag um, is for insulation, really. So you used to put um, certain perms underneath like a big hood dryer to help speed up the chemical reaction. But because we have a heat band on our scalp that's always giving off warmth because we're alive, um, <laughs> The, um, the bag just keeps all that heat that's normally coming off the scalp from escaping by creating that barrier. And then we're just going to let this process for another 10 minutes. All right. So we've come to the end of Carlos's processing time. We just checked his last rod again. We have that awesome C shape that we're looking for. That perfect C curve right there, which means the hair is taking the shape of the rod. So I'm gonna re-roll this rod and then we're going to go and rinse. So this process all in all for about 25 minutes. Um, Carlos does not have any color or any other chemicals in his hair. So, we're processing, but his hair is very straight. So we processed for the full 25, but that's why we checked it at 15, just to make sure everything was good. So right. the total processing time? The total processing time was 25 minutes, again, for this, um, for an alkaline wave. Um, other perms, you have to read the manufacturer's directions um, because they're not all the same. Some perms are 10 minutes, some are 25, some are 30. Um, so you have to make sure you rip open the box and check the processing time for the specific perm that you're using. Definitely makes a difference. Okay, all right, so we're gonna take the bag off. We're gonna get rid of all the cotton. And then we're gonna rinse with hot water for about five minutes. Okay. So, honestly, I don't actually know, but I'm assuming the hot water, because it helps swell the cuticle, and because we're breaking bonds in the hair, we want to make sure that we're getting the entirety of the hair structure. So I would assume that's why but I'm not 100% sure. I also think it has something to do with the, the chemical reaction in the waving lotion. Why do you leave the rods on there? Do you do that? Um, because the, um, the hair doesn't truly take the rod shape permanently until you put the neutralizer on. The neutralizer is what 
reforms those bonds that have been broken. That's the next step after we rinse for a full five minutes. Like, you can't cheat on this. It has to be a full five minutes. Make sure you're moving the rods. That was the rule that I learned in school. You're supposed to rinse until you can't smell it anymore. That's how you know it's, it's done. Now, again, based on manufacturer's instructions, you have to read the manufacturer's instructions. It sounds so silly and like it would be a no-brainer, but you have to read the instructions. Also, with perms, I found that it's better to go tighter um, than you want and let it loosen up rather than to perm it looser to begin with, if that makes sense because just gravity and time, over time, these curls will loosen up a little bit and he'll get more of the waves that he's looking for. What do you mean like firm and tighter? Like when you're rolling? So yeah, when you're rolling it. So you can use, you can use, they make rods of all different sizes. I mean, you, we could have done, well, not really on him, but you can do bigger rods when you get longer hair. Um, wider. I know like beachy perms were really in for a while with these really big rods that created that wavy look. But um, a lot of times those loosen up really quickly because they're not wound as tight around a rod to begin with. There's not enough tension. So now we're going through and we're just towel blotting him with a cotton towel just to get the excess moisture off the outsides. And then we're gonna go through and do the same thing with a paper towel. Um, again, we're just blotting because we don't want to um, mess with the shape of the hair. We don't wanna, you know, we don't wanna drag it or cause any friction because that will cause frizz. Now we're gonna go to with some paper towels and do the exact same thing because even you can see even after we just blotted with that cotton towel and it's all wet there's still so much excess moisture left on here so which I think is the idea of the paper towel mm-hmm Exactly. Because if it's too wet, the neutralizer just won't, just won't take. And if you look, you can kind of already see where like the curls are forming on that curve. Before when we wrapped Carlos's hair, it was sticking straight out. So this is our neutralizer. This is the second step. This is the alkaline neutralizer. Again, we're using an alkaline perm. Um, so we're just going to cut the tip off of that. So then again, same way you applied the perm solution, you want to make sure you're moving the rods so they get fully saturated. Carlos, you're definitely going to want to put that towel over your face real quick for a minute there. And same thing. I like to start front to back because typically there's more drippage in the front and so I can kind of catch that. So again, fully saturating the rods making sure we're moving them. Um, the neutralizer locks in the curls. It finalizes the chemical reaction. Now that I've saturated all my rods, I'm just kind of going through and usually with neutralizer, I will use the whole bottle just to ensure everything's saturated because that's a really important step. And then you're going to rinse again? Yes, we're going to leave this neutralizer on for five minutes and then we're going to rinse again. So that's it. we've um, let the neutralizer sit on the hair for five minutes. We're going to very gently start taking out all of the rods. And you can already see where we've got that nicely formed. Yeah, 
We did do something, Carlos, I promise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you want to make sure you're kind of just unwrapping them and taking... Kind of pretty much the, the opposite way I rolled them. So you don't want to just yank them out? No, you don't want to just cap them and then just uh, rip them out. You want to make sure you gently take them out. I'm just putting in the remainder of the neutralizer in the bottle and just kind of working it through the hair. Again, super gentle. Trying very hard not to pull the hair in any direction to just kind of let it stay in this pattern that we have created with the rods. So I'm just gonna work that through. You can yeah. change the shank if you like pull it too much. You can, yes, if you pull it too hard. That's why you're not, that's really the main reason you're not supposed to blow dry it either. Um, because even if you use a diffuser, you're still kind of pulling it. So. Yes, we are. All right. A little bit. I'll blot it a little bit um, with a microfiber towel. Specifically, microfiber is better for curls um, because it absorbs the water without creating friction like a terry cloth towel would do. So I'm going to wipe him with a microfiber towel. We're going to rinse first. So you do want to rinse the neutralizer out for five minutes as well. Again, to make sure all of the solution is out of the hair. I did, yes. So always read the instructions. Always, which sounds so silly because I feel like, yeah, I don't know. I feel like sometimes when, especially more experienced stylists, we're like, oh, we know what we're doing, so we don't always read the instructions, <laughs> but it's super important because it will absolutely change your results if you do not follow the manufacturer's directions. So I'm just putting a little bit of light conditioner on here. Um, the hair has kind of a really dry um, straw feeling right after we finish with the neutralizer, but I don't want to put anything too heavy on here. Um, nothing with really heavy butter or anything like that because again, I don't want to pull on the pattern that we just created or add weight to it. So I use a little bit of diluted conditioner just to make sure we're not oversaturating the hair with heavy moisture. Because again, even though we've neutralized and, all of, and done all of that, um, that's why we can't wash or anything for 48 hours because um, the curls still have the potential to fall. Now when you're drying curls, you don't want to rub or anything. You want to go with the curl pattern and just lightly squeeze and do that kind of scrunching motion with your hand to kind of help encourage those curl clumps. And you can already see where they're starting to form right through here. Should be about video. about six months. Now, again, it depends on how often the hair is cut, um, but typically right about six months. All right, so now that I think we've kind of blotted enough, I'll take you back to my chair. Now, oh my God, Carlos, look in the mirror. I told you, Carly, I don't know. Sorry, I need to get that weird demon voice. <laughs> it just made me so excited. All right. All right. Carlos, it's so curly. All right. So, this is just a little bit of um, the Conman leave in conditioner. And I'm just putting a little bit, again, I'm not raking it through his hair or anything. I'm very much scrunching encouraging those curl clumps all right and then carlos i'm going to finish you with just a little bit of texture spray just to give you a little bit of hold because okay. that con man's not going to have any hold to it it's just going to have like that natural finish but it is going to give you some moisture and definition but not necessarily hold so if you're trying to kind of push it back or to the side you want something yeah you want something like a gel or something a little harder 
but I'm gonna throw a little bit of Hitman in there. So I like this one because it has a little bit of an astringent property to it. So it's really good for the scalp. And um, I'm being super generous, but you probably don't need this much to be honest. But and if you are in a qu if you do need to dry it quick, do you have a diffuser? Oh uh, no. Or a blow dryer? Okay. So a diffuser attachment that's gonna um, basically it's gonna help kind of create it creates a shield between the heat and your hair. Okay. So I'm sure you've seen them those little trumpet looking things with yeah. the knobs on. That's exactly what you need. Okay. And literally just on top of your head. Okay. That's all you need to do. Again, if you're in a hurry and you need to dry it quickly. Okay. Um, but well, that's during the, even yeah. after the 72 hours, that's how I should dry it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep, if you need to dry it quickly or anything like that, absolutely okay. with the diffuser. Okay. And best tip I can give you for volume is to literally flip your whole head upside down and just with the diffuser. Okay. That's how you're gonna get the most volume. Okay. You can also put clips if you feel like it's getting heavy mm -hmm. at the crown or anything, you can also clip your roots up. Just push them forward and clip them okay. in the back yeah. and you can let them air dry. That'll help as well. Carlos, I can't get over it. It's so curly. Oh my gosh. Uh, it looks great. I know you have like the straightest hair. Yeah.